be. Now, just answering one question that some of you guys may or may not be thinking of, uh, we did write a, we do have a translator in that we accept the new, everything gets translated to the new syntax. But if you had an old query like plus structure inode colon 123 plus text one colon blog, that query would get translated to this syntax here. So you don't necessarily have to go through and rewrite all of the queries. At 90 plus percent time, it's difficult to put a real number on it. Potentially 100 percent of the time, it, it will work. Uh, places if you do some kind of a weird query where you're passing two structure inodes, that may not work. I, I doubt there's probably even anyone here who is doing anything like that. But if there, there was, just that's one query that we would have difficulty translating. But outside of that, as long as you're passing up the structure inode and it's got all the text ones and twos and all that, it'll translate your query on the fly for you, which is very, very cool. In addition to this, we got quite a few performance improvements just on pulling of content. When we, the, just the way that we store in Lucene, we've done quite a bit in 1.9 to really, really optimize that, make it, make it a lot faster. We used to store a lot of values down there. We don't do that anymore at all. Uh, kind of as friendly and much more, a uh, much cleaner index than, than what it used to be. One of the, another really nice, and I know something that's been asked for, Another guy I want to kind of highlight here for you is the forms. Now, once again, you come to, you, we come to all of our guys, and it, any of the guys now that have kind of this table listing guy down beneath, you can kind of search here. Now, we only have one guy, but as you search, you can, it'll, a lot of them will do kind of an Ajax load. Not all of them do. This one doesn't, but like you saw in the, in the roles and the users we'll look at later, they do, but they all have the UI here where you have your search in the upper corner, you can add over here, and then you have your table listing down here. Well, I have a form here called Contact Us. Basically, here's the idea. You can now use a structure to build out a form that you can use on the front end. And here's what I mean by that. We already have one created. What I'm gonna do is go back to the browser and just, I wanna show you real quick, just use the form that we already have and then we'll build a new one. So I'm gonna create a new HTML page. I'm gonna select template one. I'm gonna go here to menu and I'm gonna say test form page, okay? No different, this is our, our normal stuff that we'd expect. Here's my new page. I'm now gonna go under add content. The new content, reuse content, and add widget for those coming from 16517 all makes sense. We now also have add form. So I'm gonna click add form and I get here the little pop-up, and it tells me all of the different forms that I have available to me. Well, I'm gonna, I only have one, so I'm gonna hit select the contact us form. Well, the contact us form only has one thing in it, and it allows you to click here, and you can save, submit, etc. So the user at this point, if we were to publish our page, would be able to go to the front end, they would see the form built out, and this form could be emailed, it, it can get emailed to us. It also gets inputted as content, so the actual form comes in as, re, as real content, where in the past, for those that have used, where you do the form and you use the action to kind of do the submit form action or submit send email or any of that stuff, this is a little bit, maybe some of those provide some flexibility that maybe this doesn't. This Our new form builder will definitely grow, but at this point, the form builder when it gets submitted, it adds it as content, which is really kind of a big deal. Let's go and build a form. We, we could do is we could edit our contact us form, which is going to take us to what we're kind of familiar with, our structure manager, uh, where we can edit the, not the structure, but the editing a structure where we can edit the fields within the structure. Now, much like the width, these default fields. For example, it gets a form return page. Well, we could edit this guy, and what goes in here would be something like slash home slash submit form return page or thank you page, re thank you for registering page, something like that. The form email, what would go in here is a comma separated list of all emails that should receive 
the input from the form. So the user submits the form and it generates an email to everybody whose emails in here. And then the form title and this you again you just you input the form title whatever you want it to be it'll display on the front end in the form. Here we can also you can see we have the email. We can also add fields to our form. So we, and there's lots of fields here that you can select from. What we could do is select the tab divider at this point. The tab divider on the, your front end form would actually break it out into kind of like a next, next, next. So you'd have page one of your form, page two of your form, page three of your form, and it would allow you, based on the name of the tabs, it would put that at the top. It puts it in in an unordered list. So you can use CSS to style your tabs, make them look any way that you want and so forth. And it allows, supports dates and files and the radio buttons just like you can in, within a, a normal structure and so forth. And for the most part, I mean, that's the form builder. I mean, it's very cool. It allows you to get in the back end, create a structure, add fields to that structure, go into your front end and edit mode, add that form. Other users can place that form in different pages and so forth in a way that you'd expect it to work.